The following production is brought to you by the Talkin' Buds Leaf Show. Here we go, Talkin' Buds Leaf Show, early on a Sunday morning. Ryan and I are getting the sticks out for the first time this season later on today. So we needed to get in the studio. I'm pretty sure it's still dark outside on a Sunday morning in order to do this so we can be there in time to get the golf season started. Yeah, it's a commitment. It's a commitment to excellence and to the game. So we're up early and we're ready to go. We are ready to go. Speaking of commitments, I want to start this week's episode off on a positive note. I want to talk about something that I saw this week that I was very pleased and encouraged by. I have taken shots at Sheldon Keefe all season. As you know, I've probably been his most vocal detractor. Um, From the get-go, I said he should have never been back. However, whoa, 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 whoa. I think I was, I don't know. I, I, I was pretty, I was a pretty yeah. big detractor. Well, who would be, who would you say overall is, you go weeks on this podcast where you're just like, I don't care. I don't want to mention it. And I find a way somehow every week to complain about something Sheldon Keefe is doing. All right. You know what? The, say what you're going to say. And then I'll hop in with my response to that. I, after the New Jersey game. When he came out and he sort of publicly called everyone out and there was this sort of accountability being put on these guys. And it's something that we've ranted about a lot as a fan base in the past about how soft he's been and about how these guys need to be held accountable. And we've talked about it for weeks leading into the playoffs about, you know, if they're going to win, it's the best players that are going to do it for them. Like all these bit pieces are nice, but if, if, if the top guys don't perform, they're not winning. And I think... That was kind of what he said when he kind of called when he called them immature and basically challenged their defensive game and getting caught up in playing shinny against the New Jersey Devils. And they come out against Washington on Thursday. And I thought that was one of their best performances of the year just because of the mindset shift that I saw. We've complained about, like, when talking about the power play and stuff, about being too pretty and about wanting to score goals a certain type of way. And I've just found over the last two games, Washington on Thursday and then Buffalo on Saturday, there's been a lot more throw the puck at the net, get in there, bang in a greasy rebound, and just less worrying about we need to pass the puck four times before someone shoots it in the net and score the prettiest goal possible. And I think that that's a response to the spaz that Sheldon Keith threw on Tuesday after the New Jersey game. So I, I'm going to tip my cap to Sheldon for that. Yeah, I mean, when you look at that game, you could make the argument that if Joe Wall makes the first save on that kind of fluttering shot, it's kind of a different game. And then I found it funny how Keith was calling them immature after the game. And then all the players just like started parroting him in the media after being like, that was immature. It's an immature effort. Yeah. It's an immature effort. It's <laughs> like, I don't even know what that means. Your goalie makes the first save of the game. The game's, that game's totally different, different. Yeah. but yeah, man, he, he looks, he's got an edge to him this year. I, I will say that he's, um, I didn't want him back. And I still think that if they moved on from him, it would have been the best thing, but I know he's coaching for his life, yeah, but he he's, he has an edge, and I don't really blame him for... The, the more I watch him this season, yeah, he drives me insane sometimes, but I actually do have... A, I've grown to have a little bit of sympathy for him because how many times... And this is his own doing as well, so maybe, I don't know. How many times could you go out and sit on that stand behind that bench and watch the same guys do the same things over and over and over again? We don't know exactly what he's saying in the dressing room to try to fire these guys up. We got a bit of a window into it during that Amazon series, but also. But I think yeah. I think he's. I would say he's probably grown since yeah. then. Yeah. Like he's probably a different coach than what he used to be. He was probably he spent his whole time kind of tiptoeing around the top guys, and him calling out some guys in front of the media is a good step in the right direction. And you just look at him on that bench when things are not going well. And he is just like he's got a, he's just got a whole pissed off attitude now, and and I love it. And 
another thing about the top players too is another thing you're noticing in those in these games that they're playing a little bit better in is you're actually getting some depth scoring as well. Like that that's also been a big difference. But you've noticed in the Edmonton game, in the Washington game, and then in the Buffalo game, they have been stepping up their edge a tiny bit. Like they they I don't know what that the longest scrum in NHL history at the end of that Buffalo game. I don't know. That went on for three minutes, but yeah, they, it seems like they have I mean when they go up against the big boys, it's going to take more than just one little scrum in front of the net to to play tough. But I, you have been, you can't you can't deny that you have noticed a bit of a difference of guys having a little bit more of an attitude to to stand up and push a guy when they have to. Yeah, and they're guys that Brad Tree Living has brought in that kind of set the tone for that, with the exception of of a Jake McCabe. But if you look at like. The difference, like if we're talking about, oh, they have more of an edge this year. Oh, you just spilt your tea. Spilt my tea everywhere. Just, the guy at Timmy's, God bless him, but he that lid he is did on. not close this lid that correctly. Lid is, so is, now I'm yeah. sitting here for the rest of this episode with a little thing of tea, a bunch of spilt there. steep tea on my pants. Wow. <laughs> I'm gonna call it. Now I gotta go out in the media and call out the guy at Timmy's for not closing my lid properly. When you look at, I've lost my train of thought now after the after this after spilt tea gate. Yeah, whatever. When you look at when you say, oh, they have more of an edge this year. Who's providing that? Simone Benoit, who got a nice new contract this week. Yeah. Tyler Bertuzzi, who we're gonna not a week goes by where we don't talk about Tyler Bertuzzi. Who Tyler Bertuzzi, the second half of the season. Yes, but when he, when they signed him, we're gonna talk about him yeah, later. Yeah. I don't want to get on this now, but yeah. when they signed him, his the whole thing was. This is a guy you want for the playoffs, and as we get closer and closer to the playoffs, he is rounding into form and becoming a way more effective hockey player. That's all that matters. Max Domi brings yeah. the edge. Mm-hmm. It's like these are all guys that Tree Living has added the snot that he wanted to add last offseason. So that's a huge demeanor change. Austin Matthews, I thought, responded to... He was one of the guys who sort of parroted the immature word, but that guy has been lights out. We talked about when Marner first got hurt and he kind of looked like he was on the periphery a little bit. And since they put Max Domi and Tyler Bertuzzi with him, he's been back. He went hunting two straight games for that 60th goal and was a man possessed in the offensive zone both nights. He didn't get it against Washington, but he did get it against Buffalo. Yeah, not for a lack of trying. He's gotten a lot of shots. And the thing I like about those guys together and what they're showing as a line is... It makes Matthews kind of forecheck a little bit. I don't want to break them up. Like, I've heard people all week talking about, well, you know, it's a foregone conclusion that when Marner comes back, they're automatically going to put Marner with them. And I'm kind of like, guys, you've got a really good thing going. Sheldon is actually doing something we've begged him to do, which is leave guys together and let them develop chemistry. These three guys seem to have developed chemistry. And you're right. They they kind of get Matthews in on the forecheck, and it adds a different element and a different look to when he plays with Marner. They're kind of harder to play against. So I don't want to separate that line. Like, figure out what you're going to do with Nylander, Tavares, and Marner. Figure that out and leave that line together as far as I'm concerned. And if you get in the playoffs and it's not working, fine. Put Marner back with him. But I hate that, oh, just automatically Marner comes back and we've got to put him right back with Matthews. I'm going to use the word shocked because I can't think of a better word right now. But it's not the right word, but you get what I'm trying to say. I would be... Shocked if Mitch Marner's not on Austin Matthews' line his first game back. I, you know what, you're probably right, but I think it's the I right think that's thing. Stupid. I think yeah. that's stupid. I think it's a good thing. Why? Why mess with a good thing? I don't know. Especially now, all we've heard for weeks is, well, you know, this is the time of year where Sheldon's going to be trying things, and you found something that has worked in that first line. So just why? Why would you break that up? I don't know. Because Mitch Marner has to play with Austin Matthews. That's kind of how it's been, how it's kind of always been. So, I mean, Nylander's been in there sometimes, but for the most part, it's you're penciling in Marner and Matthews on the same line. But I've said before, I said it last week, I'm pretty sure, um, you could put Mitch Marner with just about anybody. That's what I'm saying. And he's going to elevate anyone he plays with. Like, this is no slight on Mitch Marner, I don't think. It's just... I mean, you, you want to see sometimes Matthews can can kind of disappear from a game. Yeah, he's the best goal scorer in the league, without a doubt. There's no denying that. It's just when he's not, he hasn't done it lately, but you know what I'm saying. We've brought it up before. He, sometimes he just kind of, he's just not all the way there. And you would, and watching this line play and watching them forecheck and watching them skate and, and be hard on the puck below the goal line, that's kind of what 
makes you think that you should keep this line together. Austin Matthews, 60 goals again. Yeah, there's nothing you can really, I mean, yeah, the guy's. The greatest Toronto Maple Leaf of all time. Yeah, he's the greatest goal scorer this generation. So, I mean, not this, not including Ovechkin, obviously, just like of this new his crop era. Yeah, of his era. Yeah. McDavid and everyone. It's just, there's no denying it. That list they pulled up with multiple 60-point goal seasons, those are some names. pretty serious fucking names on there. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, what a what a season. And I don't see him stopping anytime soon either. The Last year, he kind of slowed down, but he, he kind of had that wrist thing going on all year. So if he's healthy going into another season in his prime, I don't see why he can't add another one on his list. Yeah, and you know, we just talked about this line that he's currently on that's has brought a sort of new element to his game. And... Yeah, you're right. I just don't know what else there is to say. You summed it up pretty. Perfectly. I know what to say. What? Do it in the playoffs. Yes, do it. <laughs> do it in the playoffs. But yeah. all the more reason to try and keep him with Bertuzzi and Domi to add an element to his game. Well, yeah, keep that you, four you checking get, element you, there. And you need to bring in, and he, he needs to bring more in his game in the playoffs yes. as well. Not just I know he's. You kind of just watch him, kind of understand that he's just like a goal scorer, but he's just such an elite goal scorer, and he's he's pretty good defensively as well, but. He's got to bring all aspects of his game starting game one. I just want to get away from what we've talked about the last couple of weeks, which is in previous years in the playoffs, the Leafs have been a pretty easy team to defend because they just take all their defensive guys and stick them on Matthews and Marner. Yeah, yeah. So let's 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 give a different look here. That's all I'm saying. We've gone on. Well, I, I think also you could see this year there's a different William Nylander in town. Yes. Like that that's one thing that does make me a little confident. He's he's gonna hit a hundred points this season. So I mean, so is Matthews, but it's yeah, yeah, having him on another line, he's just a he's a different X factor, hopefully, when playoff time comes around. Simone Benoit. Three year contract extension, one point three five million per year. This ad uh, this kind of goes hand in hand with the Bobby McMahon extension from last week. You texted me last night during the game when they showed the stat of how many players Sheldon Keefe has coached since 2019. A wild stat. And he kind of, he said the other day after um, they announced this extension, I believe, he was like, you know, it's nice to have some, he said something along the yeah, lines so of like, continuity, it's nice to have like, some continuity, yeah, yeah, which build, I think some yeah. people took as maybe a veiled shot at Kyle Dubas. This is a different thing that we're seeing with Dubis. I mean, with Tree Living as opposed to Dubis. Like, they've got young, good young guys in McMahon and Benoit, and he's signing them to team-friendly deals pretty early as opposed to waiting till the offseason and either giving them too much money or letting them walk for nothing. Yeah, well, I mean, these guys haven't exactly, er like, earned that. I mean, this is Benoit's first kind of full... Like, I think Ben was earned this extension. We omitted him from our top we six did. in we the playoffs. Did. We, well, we, oh, yeah, we had a guy yeah, going, yeah, we had nuts, a guy in going our, nuts about going it. Nuts but about he has it a good comments. point, though. I don't disagree with him. I mean, I, I, I just assume I didn't put him in there because... He f has been scratching yes, him. Yes. I assumed that just because since everyone's been back and they got Edmondson, he's been the odd man out because he's not a right-handed defenseman and they like some other guys better. That's why I left him off my list. I would love to see him in there. I love his game. You you watch every episode this this year. We've been praising this guy all season. And and, and people who want to take it as a shot at at Dubis, like maybe it was, but it's just a fact. Yeah. Like he's just speaking a fact. Like it's just it's true. And and the guys they have had as secondary players we hated every single one of them. Like they were like the Kerfoot and Engvall and just like I saw I saw a stat the other day. Door, soft after, hockey players. After um Ryan Reeves got an assist Nick on Patan. Yeah, after Ryan Reeves got an assist on the fourth line goal against the Capitals the other night, someone tweeted that he's tied Dennis Malgan and Del Dennis Malgan's all time points as a Maple Leaf. Yeah, it's just like that. That's or Dennis Malgan. Guys just the just the poster boy for useless Kyle Dubas bit piece players. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, I mean, I don't know what to say. It's just, it's just a fact. I mean, it's hard to build 
Like it's nice to have some players who, and it's nice because these guys like are are guys you that play quote unquote kind of the right yes. way or the way you would want yes. depth players to Simone play. Simone Benoit leaves it all out there every shift. Yeah, and he's physical. He and loves. He, he's like he got the quotes are so funny. He's like he's such a good guy in the media too. He's talking about he's like I got here and I'm like this is a great place. This organization's unreal. I want to stay. And he's just played very well yeah yeah he's good he's a good i mean he's still not at that top defense when we're looking for but he's a he's a nice guy to have around and mcmahon is a is a bigger guy who can shoot the puck who's, who's now a, playing in your top six yeah, who's a likable guy who can it, move up and down your lineup now it's has chemistry with john Tavares. yeah you can now you can kind of slot him in anywhere because you know he's gonna four check you know he's gonna you know when he get the chance to shoot the puck he can put it in like that's 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 big for him he's he's what arguably the most likable hot player ever in terms of his story and everything so yeah. it's nice to see him get locked up i went back and revisited the last two episodes because i wanted to just sort of refresh myself before we did this morning two weeks ago you and i samsonov's getting game one samsonov's getting game one last week joe wall's getting game one joe wall has the potential to be a top five goalie in this league and then saturday night against buffalo happens and here we are again Ilya Samsonov's getting game one. I got, you know how many texts I got last <laughs> night being like, I know you love Joe Wall. And it's like, that's not, that's not what I meant. I meant like, I. You think he's got the tools? I think he's got the tools yeah. and it's nice to finally have like, it's almost like a fantasy of the Leafs um, drafting and developing a high level goaltender. Like that is something we've been waiting for, for my whole lifetime, basically. Right. So that's that. It's it, I think he has the tools and it's something that gets me very excited. But at the end of the day, I don't really give a shit who starts game one. It's like Ilya Samsonov was unbelievable against the Sabres. I know they played pretty well in that game. But if you look at the numbers, like the Sabres had more opportunities, a lot of slot shots. Like they, it's not like they were out of that game. They had a lot of opportunities to score goals in that game, and he, he just oh, came man, up he made big. the save, save of the year. Save, yeah, he made the save of the year when he was down on his like front and got his glove up and knocked it down. He looks, he looks dialed. Yeah, he's he's he was unbelievable. You could so. argue, like I think, let's flip flop again, and if you're going into the playoffs and he's still playing like this. As you've pointed out numerous times, this is the guy that got you over the hump and got you your first playoff series win. Yeah, I mean, the so you, you, give him give him the game one start. Keith seems to want to do that. I think there's an element of, I don't know, I just get the vibe from Sheldon Keith that he wants Samsonov to be the guy. Maybe it's there's the experience factor that yeah, he has like, over Joe Wall, but he just, I don't know, I just I've gotten that vibe from Keith lately. But I've gotten the vibe that the. But I've I've kind of gotten a different vibe too, though. Like I've gotten the vibe that the organization really wants Joe Wall to take the reins and and run with it. But I mean, look what happened to the to the Bruins last year in the playoffs. They had the Vesna winning goaltender come in and absolutely stink the joint out. Yeah. So you can start whoever you want. In game one, if that guy sucks, game one, you're probably seeing the other guy. So I don't. It's it's very important. And it's it, 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 like you can't overlook who's starting game one. Like it is very important, but it, it like the guy gets flashed in the first game. The, the other guy's going in and then this conversation is just gone. So it's it's pick your guy. Hopefully he plays well. And if he doesn't, you might see the other guy. It's going to be a, a rotating door. And both these guys, too, how, they both make an acrobatic save and they're laid out. So it, like it, things could change any second as well. You might even see Martin Jones. You never know. I don't think we're seeing Martin. Well, yeah, Jones hey, both these guys. You've also what, got you've also got Matt Murray kicking around. Tons of yeah. practice footage of Matt Murray. Well, I've seen Joe Wall and Ely Samsonov both make acrobatic saves this year, yes. or a save where they had to really push and lay out, and they didn't come up very good. So Joe Wall, he he was not very good in the in the New Jersey game. And that like that was his first like real stinker of the year that I can remember. And he's coming back from an injury and Kelly Rudy was pointing out that you can tell in the way he's moving that he still doesn't fully trust the ankle. And I just think if if you're heading towards the playoffs, Samsonov looks to be in a better mental headspace in terms of like just feeling better about himself. So 
I think you got to go with him game one. Well, you still got to tune in next week to hear me tell you that you have to start Joe Wall game one. You still got nine games left, though. Like, that's that's a long time in goaltender land. Like, it's not a lot of games, but in terms of what can happen to your goaltending, it, it. a lot could happen in nine games, especially with these two guys. When asked last night about the last time he started in Buffalo and they lost 9-3, Ilya Samsonov said, quote, what happened last time? Nine goals? Fuck that shit. Yeah, they, that was brutal. That was brutal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was but, nice to see them kind of... I thought the Sabres actually didn't play like that awful. Those, man, those Buffalo Sabre unis, whew, those are clean. Maybe it's it's... The nostalgia yeah, yeah, in I think me, because I like their normal uniforms. Oh, I love the 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 black ones. Because when they went away from those and went back to the, actually, no, they had those nasty kind of like navy ones for yeah. a bit that yes. were kind of yellow. Yes, but um, I I like their normal unis too. But but the Sabers, like you said, you and I say it every week that Sabers, Senators, Habs. Like, all these teams that are at the bottom of the division, they always play the Leafs tough. There's you know what, never you know what, a night off. You know what irked me about last night, though, is Max Domi coming out and saying that was the best crowd of the oh, year. Oh, it was. It was. Yeah, but that's a joke. It, it, like, well, it is. I, like, come on. I'm glad, like, I'm glad you mentioned that. It is a joke because it's just everything you watch that game, everything that people criticize Scotiabank Arena for is proven true. Whenever when they you go, watch that. Yeah, whenever they go to Buffalo, whenever they go out west, Ottawa. whenever they go to Ottawa, like it's just the Leaf fans there are rabid real, and real they make fans, noise. Real fans who are purchasing affordable tickets to yeah. go and actually watch and be part of the game. And it just proves the all the, the criticism that Scotiabank Arena gets for being too white-collar and corporate. It's absolutely true. How many nights... Do you and I watch? You say it all the time. You hate Scotiabank Arena. I, I it's can't. A, it's a stand brutal watching hockey in that arena. It's a brutal atmosphere. The atmosphere is brutal, and it's just like it's it's so bright in there. Like I don't know. There's something about watching them playing there. I I prefer to watch them on the road. And apparently they, they yeah. prefer playing yeah, on the road. Apparently they yeah they prefer playing on the road because they've been a way better yeah, road. Twenty two nine and six on the road, and twenty thirteen and three. I mean they've kind of gotten a little bit better at home, but. Like they they do like playing on the road as well. So yeah, well, and that's also, you know, there's been a lot of talk. Like K- Tampa, you pointed this out last week, and they talked about it all week on sports radio. Tampa's Tampa's only four points behind them, so there is a a chance here that the Leafs drop into a wild card spot heading into the playoffs. Home ice advantage is out the window. One, I think we saw with the two years they had home ice against Tampa, doesn't mean anything no. when it comes to this Leaf team. Doesn't mean anything. They, they won the biggest game they could win in, yeah, in, in Tampa Emily Arena. Also, as you just pointed out, been a far better road team this year than they have been at home. And I think, you know what? You know what I really bought into this week? I have sat here and I've said, you know, Boston, Florida, my mind is sort of focused on them. Even if they do fall down and play the New York Rangers, I'm not... You know what? It doesn't matter who you play at this point. Yeah. The pressure is the same no matter who the opponent is. Well, and yes, maybe yeah. if you play the Rangers, there isn't the history there that you have with Boston and Florida. Still, though, still, not getting it done in the first round is going to be, it's not good enough. So it just kind of is what it is. And I like that. I hope that Keefe is taking that mentality with him in the room, which I think he is, because that's what it has to be. Like, I'm not, stop worrying about who we're playing. Yeah, I mean, even if you look at the standings now, like the the Rangers have have are now the President's Trophy winners. So if you look at even if they finish in the first wild card, they'd be going to Boston anyways. Yeah. So I mean, you're gonna have to play. You could, like they're gonna have to play these teams anyway. Like whether if you if you really think this team is gonna go on a cup run, like they're gonna have to beat all these teams. So it's it really doesn't having matter said if it's that, in the first. Having round. said that, I'm going to contradict my rant that I I just went on. I am pretty happy that there is no real scenario that they're going to play the Tampa Bay Lightning in the first round again. The Tampa Bay Lightning are 8-1-1 one, and one in their last 10, and Vasilevsky is rounding in to play off Vasilevsky. And so well, I right am, now, they'd be going to, to Boston. Well, That's a brutal <laughs> matchup for the Bruins. Yeah, that oh, is. I, I, I think the Lightning are scary for anyone. Yeah. I think the Lightning are scary. Like, if yeah. you look at either... The Bruins, the Panthers, playing, or the Rangers? Yeah. That's a that's a brutal, that's a terrifying matchup. Yeah, that's a terrible matchup yeah. for whoever, whoever team plays them. Yes. Boston would be in big trouble. I think the Bruins would be in trouble if they played the Lightning. Mm-hmm. 
Florida Panthers have five, four, and one in their last ten. Yeah, whatever. Or four, five, and one. Excuse me. You know, you're not buying it. You're not worried about whatever. it. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> They're fine. They'll, they'll be okay. Yeah. They have defensemen who could actually move the puck at a high level. They're, yes. they're, they're okay. Yes. They're fine. The Leafs, Monday night, Florida Panthers. Yeah, they got a tough schedule. Well, they got, and, and they're kind of in this tough spot now with these injuries. Like, but I, I, I'm, I, I'm at that time of year where sometimes when you hear this complaint all the time in sports when the Jays play the Yankees 19 times and – you play your division too much. And then there was the old NHL where they would play the Sens like eight times a year. And then we saw it in the Canadian division. But I, I am starving for divisional games right now. Like, I feel more Engaged. watching the Leafs play the Capitals is yeah. just. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The Washington Capitals are. Yeah. Or even watching them play the Devils. Like, it's just I, 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 well, I cannot get invested Battle up, pal. They I know. Play, I they know. play the Devils two more times. But right now, like they got a couple great, like yes. I, even when they play the Sabers, I don't mind it. But you got the Panthers, There's Lightning, the Habs, Canadians, yeah. Penguins, which is the Kyle Dubas. Yeah, even yeah. the Red. Like I, I do, kind of go from critical Leaf fan to like die hard whenever they're playing like i hate the florida panthers they are great heels like i i just i i the, despise them so are the bruins yeah, yeah like it's just i i i'm looking forward to these games coming up this yes. week especially because it's there's valuable points on the line you're jockeying for position in the yeah. division and for your playoff seating i want to talk a little bit two more things i want to get to first one is is the defense you got morgan riley out nursing an injury. You got Timothy Lilligren, who Keith said the other day is going to miss some time. We don't know who, what exactly his injury is. I think I saw on Twitter it was like a, a right side of the body or a left side of the body injury. They've got Joel Edmondson out, who I think they're just, he, who I think's a little nicked up, and they're trying to get him ready to go for the playoffs. So you've been tuning into these games this last this last week, and you see the six guys out there, and you're like. Whoa. And it hasn't been horrible. Yeah, but then you, you also look at those six guys and you go, Benoit's come back in the lineup and he's shown that he's a very valuable player. Yes. And now, and us omitting him off our list stupid. was stupid because he's a, why wouldn't you want a guy who plays like that in the playoffs? Over Timothy Lilligren, like who, who has some upside, no doubt. Like, especially he's kind of taken over the power play a little bit before he got hurt, but. Why wouldn't you want a defenseman in there who finishes his checks and is kind of hard to play against? Do you think? And, and even even look at look at the old man. I I said there's no way Mark Giordano should be playing. Comes out, gets a goal. He comes out, gets a goal, and he's punching guys in the I, face I in front of the net. He's I blocking shots. I've never bought into the Geo shouldn't be in the lineup. I I've never like the the dude is a veteran warrior yeah like but that's has, the guy you want yeah his but, limitations but on, like he has shown like last year in the playoffs he wasn't great no he but has shown times where he's been extremely slow it's not however like it's however here's what i'll say no it's not like it's crazy but here's what i will say tj brody has been he struggled this year i thought he was a little better against buffalo but he's he's he struggled this year Giordano has had two lengthy injury stints this year, which, yes, he's dealing with an injury. However, he's not playing. And I think a lot of the criticism with him last year is he was playing way too much and then ran out of gas come playoff time. So I just don't think it's outrageous to say I we want him in our in our top six for game one because we need we need his veteran leadership experience. We need his sort of spark. I've never been a huge TJ Brody guy. Not that he's been awful. If you actually look at all the defensemen who've been clowned on in this city, he's actually had a he's had a pretty good run as a Leaf. Actually, he's been pretty good. But it's hard to compare him to some other defensemen on this team because as much as he's slowed down and sometimes he just gets beat to pucks, he, he's the, he's been he's playing against the best players against uh, on the other team night in and night out. He's their top pair guy, so it's. He's had a lot of hard matchups to face. And and a guy drawing back in and showing some promise playing against the third line of another team. Like, you got to cut Brody a little bit of slack in that regard that he has to face the best players yes. on the other team every single night. Yes. And that's just not what he can do anymore. It's just he can't skate fast enough. He can't move the puck enough. 
He hasn't scored scored a goal in over a hundred games. Like it's just, I kind I'm kind of feel for the guy a little bit if you look at the matchups he has to face on a on a nightly basis. No, that's a fair point. That's a fair point. But I, I the point of bringing this up was to say. Three times this week, I looked at the the lineup to start the game. I looked at those defense pairings and went, "Well, that's what that's what's hilarious about having all these conversations about who's gonna play, who's gonna play, who's gonna play." Well, right now, everyone's hurt. Like, if, whoever's gonna play are the guys who are healthy, and that's uh, who's gonna play. Yeah, and also it's like it, it goaltending makes a world of difference. Like the the PK had a pretty good week this week. Why? Because especially on Saturday night, Samsonov made the saves. I know what's wrong with their PK. Okay, what's wrong with their PK? They play. I I I I forget what um, color guy was breaking it down. I don't know if it was Johnny or if it was Sammer, but they they pointed out that they play like a pressure penalty kill system. So if there's kind of a loose puck in the corner with one offensive guy, a defenseman and a forward are both going to attack that guy and try to outman him to get the puck. Right. But the problem with that is is it doesn't work all the time and the personnel you have on the ice are not fast enough to get back in their position. So that leaves a guy like Pasternak or whoever the other team's best player is wide open for a shot. Well, is that why you think he, cause I've been surprised at how much he has William Nylander out on the PK Nylander's out there a lot, especially yeah. with Marner hurt. And well, he's, he's that shorthanded threat. Like shorthanded yeah. goals are kind of a thing in the NHL now. Like, but also, he's a guy that has the speed to get back into position. Yeah, if he wants it. And Connor, I'm more referencing kind of their D men. Like again, not dumping on TJ Brody, but TJ Brody not winning a battle and then trying to get back to the front of the net to to cover Jack Hughes is not is not ideal. Yeah, because he just doesn't have the speed. Connor Dewar has been a nice addition to the PK. I really like Connor Dewar a lot. I think he's a great fourth line guy who's a specific role player who's got some speed and is like kind of a younger guy. Big fan. Big fan of what I've seen from Connor Dewar. You're not commenting. <laughs> it's fine. It's, it's fine. It's, I don't know. Big fan. I'm a, a big little, fan. I like you need guys much. like that come playoff time. Like you you these are guys that you need that they haven't had like Dennis Malgin. You know who I Alex think, Kerfoot. You know who I think's played where well ver- lately is David Camp. David Camp. I think David Camp's had a great run here the past month or two. Well, I know. I know in. he's just like a desert when it comes to offensive production. But well, he settled in. It doesn't. He settled into his fourth line center role nicely. He's a guy. Kiprio says this all the time about don't like don't put don't make expectations for guys too high and i think they've done a good job with david camp it's like you're the fourth line center this is a very specific role that you're going to play and he's playing it but he can skate and he can f- i find whatever line he's centering lately i've been hard on the forecheck and keeping the puck in the right zone for a good amount of time that's right. that's all you can really ask for for a guy who doesn't provide anything offensively right just be on the positive side of possession in the offensive zone, and I think he's done that. I didn't want to get out of here today without getting your take on this and just chit-chatting about this a little bit. So Mitch Marner spoke to the media for the first time this week and was just sort of asked about what happened. Like, how did he get hurt? And let's play the clip. This is the clip. Go ahead. What happened there when you were calling? Uh... Yeah, I mean, I've been watching every game. You guys have been talking about it every single game, so I think you guys can uh, you know, say whatever you want. It's behind me now. Um, you know, stuff happened, and, and we kind of just go on from it. So. So unprompted. Yeah, like. <laughs> Calm down. I, like. Yeah, like you're. I saw a lot of people talking about how, you know, Mitch needs to kind of revisit with the PR team about how he handles the media. My take on Mitch Marner is has been this for a while. Put your phone down, man. Like, it's it's very clear that Mitch Marner, I think he uses the media. I think he takes shots at the media, but I think he is really taking shots at the fans. And I think it all started when he had his last contract negotiation and people were roasting him, and people did crazy things like slide into his DMs and say ridiculous shit, which you should never do. He also did have like a traumatic incident as well. Yes, yes. Which is so not that's no small thing. So that's fair, but I don't know. Like when I see 
he's always defensive in the media. Always. He's always making comments about, well, no one believes in us and everything that everyone says outside this room. And it's just, it just jumps off to you that like, buddy, put your phone down. Stop looking at Mitch, at your name on Twitter. Stop, like, stop. Stop looking at it. It's just, it's just so blatantly obvious that that's what's happening. I don't know what, like, I, I can only, I only really consume. Actively sinking. Have you, like, I've literally, like, my chair, I've been talking to you, and as, as this episode's gone on, I'm just going. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have not noticed. But, I mean, I, I don't know what media, like, there's a lot of people. I mean, would you even consider us? We're not media, but, like, we talk about the team. So there's but a I lot don't of, think it's the media. Like, who? It's not the media, it, because, but that's kind of my point. Yeah. It's, like, all Sportsnet and TSN have done has shown graphics and, and and double down on the fact that this team isn't as good without, without him. him in the lineup. Yes. If you look at the record of their best players when they're out of the lineup, they have the worst record with him out of the lineup. They're a 500 hockey team with him out of the lineup, and everybody else... They have a pretty decent record without. So it's it's not it's not the big media that's criticizing you. It's 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 clearly fans. fans. It's fans, yeah, and that's what I mean. So I think he instead of coming out and I think he, he who who's questioning the in, says, injury? Like he he yeah, he he had an open net. He could have he could have put it in, like whatever. It, it I think, happens, but he, he legit rolled his ankle. Like you could see it. It was right, a very I don't even think about play. I don't, there's a lot of people who I'm a, I'm very active on Twitter, as you know. There's a lot of people who are not Mitch Marner fans for for reasons and are his detractors. Well, some of that because is, is some of that's his own fault. Exa- exactly, exactly. Like and and he's I not think off the hook. It's in terms clear. Of- and like I said, it's it's clear that he he reads what people say about him on social media, and I think it really bothers him and upsets him. And there's a as it as it would anyone, there's a reason why pro athletes, famous people, whatever, always say like turn off your replies, don't read the DMs, yeah. don't read everything. Like there's a reason why that's a thing, and it's just the defensiveness. Like he's been criticized in the past about being kind of unlikable, and that's what people are talking about. It's like it's a simple question he's being asked, and he kind of just fires back. Well, well, you guys can say whatever you want. It's like, relax, man. Well, even relax. Even, not even that question. That that whole. If you watch that whole interview Q and A, like he's he's, he's, he's just he's, like he's, he's just got, he's got a chip on his. He's shoulder. got no like. Qual like Samsonov coming out and being like fuck, fuck that shit yeah, like yeah. that's like yeah I agreed yeah. that's something I would say yeah or like Simone Benoit coming out and talking about how much he hates the Ducks and how yeah. like this opportunity means so much to him and he wasn't gonna let it slip away like that's that's a real guy yeah. saying a real thing yeah. like I, I this isn't a personal attack on Mitch Marner but like the way also the way he like answers questions like in that whole interview he's kind of just like. He's just not a real person. And yeah. then all of a sudden, he just has this random spaz. And you're like, buddy, <laughs> go have a cup of settle down. Yeah. Like, oh, like wh- what? Like, it's nobody just... said anything. The guy just asked you kind of a simple, straight up question. And kind of like, how did that happen or whatever? And then you just kind of like threw a spaz. It, like, just, <laughs> it just makes me raise an eyebrow because, you know, as soon as the season's over, Ryan, and we head into the off season and into next year... We're going to be talking about Mitch Marner's next contract. Yeah. And it's going to be, I think it's going to be a lot similar to how it went last time, where I think people are going to have an opinion on what he should sign for. And I just encourage him and his camp, quite frankly, don't read any of it. Stay off the socials, man. But like, Stay why, off the why socials. Does he, why does that? I know people saying negative things about you. Like, it obviously doesn't feel good. It's going to affect you in some sort of way. But if you just look at, like what's in front of you in his camp in terms of like his contract, just show the graphics that TSN and Sportsnet have been showing to Brad Tree Living. Yep. You know, look, look at look at your record. Look at this team's record over the past several years without me in the lineup. Yes, yes. Like we all know what he's getting. He's going to get probably around the same that he's getting right now and a bit of a raise. Like I, I don't, I, I I'm don't thinking, know. Like, I'm thinking he's coming in in the in the in the twelve. Yeah, somewhere in the twelves. And and obviously by the graphic earlier of how many guys Keefe has coached, these guys making so much money has caused a lot of turnover mm-hmm. because guys start playing a little bit better and you can't sign them for the money you want you want to, so they got to move on. But like we, we know what his deal is, and 
at some point you gotta you gotta grow up and be mature and just like kind of block out the noise a little bit. Yeah, because dude, you're an NHL hockey player who is an, a perennial ninety point guy every year. Every year, like there's no doubting that you're like a great hockey a player who contributes yeah. a lot. Yeah, you need to show up in the playoffs when it matters and stop being so soft. But like <laughs> that's, a, that's a big factor. But it's like that's like at some point. Like I'm trying to put myself in his shoes, and it's easy for me to do that sitting down in this dingy little studio criticizing. But at some point, you got to just laugh it off and be like, well, "Whatever, yeah, who cares? Yeah. Like, who cares about Joe Schmo on his couch criticizing? Exactly. Like, I'm an NHL hockey player. Who cares making... what two mokes on a podcast yeah, have like, to say? Like, I wouldn't give a shit what I had to say if I was a press. Some guy player. on Twitter who is like lives his whole life on like some of these guys on Twitter. Yeah. It's like, do you have a job? Yeah, like, this guy's, just get, tweet this guy's all up at day. five a.m. Like, yeah. you know, like it's this guy's getting up at five a.m. so he can be there for his ten forty tea time and play like an absolute idiot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, buddy. Week ahead. All div- you were saying you want division weeks. You pointed this out earlier. We got yeah. Panthers on Monday. We got Lightning on Wednesday. We got Habs on Saturday. Yeah, it's a great three game stretch. It is a great and the Saturday game is at the Bell Center. Always a if it's Leafs, Habs got to be at the Bell Center. Yeah, I don't Can't care be. if the Habs are in last place. I am down. Yeah, a hundred percent. That's a building. That is that is a building. That's real fans, man. Yeah. Like, it's real fans. Like, the people in the building at Key Bank Center in Buffalo, like, those are real fans who got affordable tickets to go watch the team. I mean, you could also make the argument that the reason why the Leafs are in the position that they're in financially is because of all the... It's because everyone... because of how it is. Yes. Like, there's no... It's it's good for business. But some some nights, it's like... It's brutal. It's it's uh, brutal. I I actually, like... You could hear a pin drop in there When they're playing a middling Western Conference team or... Some teams in the Metro at Scotiabank on a Tuesday, like, it is not, it's not the best. No, it's, it's not It's not my all. favorite. No. All right, we're going to get out of here. We'll be back next week. We'll be back bright and early next Sunday, too. Yeah. Well, we got to gear up for, for playoff time. A couple, of, yeah, we got to gear up for playoff gym. time. Yep, couple, we're only a few weeks away. Really looking forward to it. As we get closer, we'll probably find out who the opponent is. Yeah, who knows? And then it's go time. We'll be we'll be here. I've been saying it for weeks. We'll be here after every single playoff game like we are every year. So if you don't want to miss those shows, hit that like and subscribe button below. Spread the word. Tell your friends. We really appreciate it. 